Welcome to this workshop looking at the functionality of the Texas BA2 Plus calculator, one of the two approved calculators that you're allowed to use for your CFA studies all the way through, so CFA levels one, two and three. The alternative calculator is the HP12C, which is also permitted for the exams, but is far less frequently used. And for this purpose, we're going to therefore focus on the BA2 Plus. Uh, and there is a slight variant of this known as the BA2 Plus Professional uh, that you're also allowed to use for the exam. Now, the first thing we need to do is to basically get our calculator set up, because as we unwrap it uh, for the first time, it's going to be in its factory settings and not all of those settings are ideal for the purposes that we want to use the calculator for in the exam room. So let's take a look at that first. So here we go. Now, the first question we might ask is how many decimal places do we want the calculator to show on the screen? And there are a number of possible suggestions. Uh, some people will say that maybe five or six is the ideal and a lot of people work on that basis. Um, others say that they might be tempted to uh, adjust the number to reflect, for example, the requirements of a question. But to be honest, I would never look to do that. But there is a third possibility and certainly one that I quite like and we'll show you in a moment, which is to have a floating decimal place. Now, what I should say about this calculator is that it's rather like an elephant in that it never forgets. So unless we take the batteries out or those batteries expire and they're normally good for at least three or four years of use, then whatever settings we put in, the calculator is going to remember each time until such time as we choose to change them in some way. Now, if we're looking at setting the number of decimal places, what we'll find usually is that the calculator is preset to two, and that is what's currently showing on the calculator that we have on the screen. How can we change that? Well, if we press the second button, so the second button down on the left-hand column, and now press format, which is the decimal point at the bottom line, you can see that in the screen of the calculator, it's now displaying deck equals two, in other words, two decimal places. And let's say we've decided that for our purposes, five decimal places would be a more user-friendly functionality. What we do is as follows. We press the five, but now we must remember to always press the enter button, the second button along on the top row. Otherwise, the calculator will not know that this is the change that we wish to facilitate. If I was now to come out of this particular setting, so by doing second and then quit the top left hand button, you can now immediately see how the display has changed to show five decimal places. And for many people, they will choose to leave it at that setting. But let's also think about how we could have a floating decimal place, something I quite like, because it means if we get an answer that is a, a nice round number, then it shows discreetly on the screen. But if we need greater granularity, then that's also something that is immediately available to us. So again, let's use the same approach. So we'll do second and then the decimal place, i.e. the format button on the bottom row. Remember, we've now currently got this set to five decimal places. Now let's change that to nine. So we'll do nine and remember to press the enter button. And now I'm going to do second and quit again. And it appears that we've got a, a very small screen display, a simple zero. And if I do two plus two, again, of course, that's a nice round number, we get four. But what if we do any number we like? So let's put a random number in and let's say take the square root of that number. You can now immediately see that we have displayed to us a full array of decimal places after that decimal point. And for me, I, I tend to find that works really well. So that's the first skill that we've completed. We've basically set the number of decimal places. On our slide, we show the way in which we set that for five, but I've also demonstrated how we can set that for the floating decimal place. The next skill we need to master is to look at something, as you can see, called mathematical precedence. And many of you may well recollect this from your school studies when you looked at something called BODMAS.
which stands for brackets and orders first in our calculations, then divide and multiply, and then finally add and subtract. Now the problem is that when the BA2 Plus comes out of the wrapper, it's not set up for that purpose. It's set up in what's going to be known as chain mode. And this is quite significant because imagine, for example, that I said to you, we have a calculation as simple as two plus three multiplied by four. If as the calculator presupposes, we use chain mode, that is going to do two plus three, i.e. five, and then multiply that by four to give us 20. If, however, we were using bod mass, this would mean that we do the multiplication before the sum. So in that case, we would do three times four, which would of course give us 12, and then we'd add two, leaving us with a result of 14, a very different answer to the one I gave you previously. And for our financial calculations, it's certainly the bod mass mode that we need to use. So let's put our calculator into that setting. So again, we're going to press the second button on that left-hand column and go back to the decimal point, which was the format. Remember, ours is currently showing that we're set to nine decimal places. I'm now going to use the scrolling arrows, which are on the top row. You can see an arrow for up and an arrow for down. I'm going to use the down arrow. The calculator is set up to work in degrees rather than radians. We want to leave it in that setting. It has a date setting. It's a US date setting, but for our purposes, really that's not going to make any odds and we should leave it as it is. Scroll on again. We want to have commas after thousands. So again, that's perfectly acceptable and we move on. But here's the problem child. So as you can see, CHN standing for the chain setting. And we need to change that to something called AOS, the Algebraic Operating System, which is a, a different abbreviation for bod mass that I've already referred to. So let's make that change. So we're going to do second and enter. And you can see that that's now changed to the AOS setting and second and quit to take me out. We've now achieved our second objective. We have set the correct mathematical precedence for the calculator. Now the third change actually is a change we may not have to make because I have to say in many cases, the presetting will already be correct, but we need to check. And what we need to ensure is that for any given period, and notice I said period rather than year, so a period could be a week, a month, a quarter, a half year, and so on, that the calculator only does one interest calculation iteration. And there is a danger in some cases that it may be set up to presume that we have a 12 month year with 12 interest calculations rolling over within that period. So let's just check that that isn't the case. So what we're now going to do is again, press that second button. And by the way, you may have spotted that in the top left hand corner of the calculator screen, a small second logo appears to confirm that you've pressed that particular button. And now I'm going to press not the format as we did before, but the IY button, which is the second button in on the third row above it saying PY, which is basically looking at our periodicity and we want this set to one. Now you can see uh, as we surmise that actually the calculator is set up correctly and therefore all we need to do at this point is press second and quit to come back out of there. Our third setting has been checked. Now the final point to make here, but one that I'll demonstrate when we come through to some calculations in a moment, is that this calculator has a number of arrays and information will be stored in those arrays until such time as we clear them. Now that's going to be really important because what we must make sure is that we develop the discipline of always clearing an array before we then go on to do the next set of calculations. Otherwise, what we're going to do is contaminate one set of numbers with what went before. And of course, the consequence of that is going to be a wrong answer. Now, when we come to look at one of the biggest areas of use of the calculator, which is time value of money, 
we're going to have to get used to clearing out the previous TVM, as we often abbreviate it to be, time value of money calculations. And the way in which we're going to do that is, as you can see, do second and FV. So second, we should now know where that function is, and FV on our TVM row of the calculator, which is the third row, and press FV at the end, you can see that above that button it says clear TVM. We'll put that into practice in anger in just a moment. But before we look at those calculations, uh, let's look at one other useful feature of the BA2+. Plus, and that is the memory function. Because often we're not going to be able to remember all of the facets of a particular calculation. And of course it's extraordinarily useful therefore to be able to store that within the calculator. And the good news is that this calculator doesn't have one memory, it actually has 10. So we have a memory in effect lying behind the zero and then the digits one to nine. Let's take a look. So in the screen here, it's saying, let's do the calculation of two plus 3.5 and we wish to store it. So let's do the same thing. So we're going to do two plus 3.5 equals of course 5.5 and now I'd like to store that number. So let's put that into memory one. Now to do that, I'm going to press the store button, which is the third button up from the bottom on the left-hand column. And then I'm going to press the number one. Now, one of the things we have to get used to on this calculator, certainly compared to some that you may have used at college or for some other financial exam papers, is that some of the things that we press and expect to see on the screen don't immediately show on the screen. And that's something we're going to have to get used to because to begin with, it might just uh, erode our confidence a little bit that we've pressed the correct buttons, but we have. Let's check that that's the case. So if I clear the screen and now I want to recall what I've put in memory one, let's check if that 5.5 is there. So I'm going to do recall, the second button up on the left-hand column, number one, which of course was memory one. And sure enough, there it is. There's the 5.5 that we put in there. But let's make this just a little bit more complicated. So let's make up some other numbers, any numbers we like. So um, we'll have a 12 and I'm going to store that in memory two. I'll have thirty-six. I'm going to store that in memory three. And we're now clear the screen. And let's just check it's there. So recall three. Yep, there's the number we put in there. But now let's imagine that I've been involved in some other calculations in the exam for a few moments. I now revert back and I'm thinking I simply can't remember what I've put in each of the memories. The good news is there is a way to open up effectively all of the memories and scroll through them so that we can actually see what we've got in each one. And that's a useful feature to have. So let's just check this. So what we're now going to do is we're going to press second, but we're now going to press the zero on the bottom row that you can see has the abbreviation mem for memories above it. Memory zero, that's behind the zero number, but well, we didn't put anything in there, so that makes sense. Let's scroll down with our scroll arrows on the top row. Memory one, yes, there's the 5.5. Scroll down again. Oh, it looks as though actually I didn't get to save the number that I put in memory two, so there's nothing in there. Memory three, yes, there's the 36. So this is extremely useful because we can now scroll through all 10 memories, although I think it's unlikely that you'll have 10 numbers that you've saved simultaneously. What we can also do, therefore, is clear all of those memories simultaneously, and we can do that by being in the memory function and then doing second and now clear work which is the CE stroke C button in the bottom left-hand corner of the calculator. That's the memory function. And you'll also see a little note there at the bottom of the slide, which says it's possible to recall the last answer from the calculator by pressing second and then answer. And notice that the answer is effectively the equals button. 
So by doing second equals, you can recall the answer to the previous calculation that you've undertaken. Uh, sometimes that's useful. I have to say it, it's not something that perhaps you'll use too frequently in the exam, but it's handy to know that it's there.